Good afternoon from Not My Garden. Uh, if you can see all the apples behind me, then you can maybe guess that we're at a fruit exhibition, but it's not just any fruit exhibition, it's Europe 2019, which is an international fruit exhibition where people from uh, all over Europe come to exhibit their local varieties. Uh, my husband is calling this event an event for apple groupies, so for me it's a place to meet like-minded people and see lots of different apples. I'm here with Paul van Laar uh, from the uh, Belgian National Orchard Association, which is not, uh, this year organizing this exhibition. And can you please tell us something about the history of the exhibition? Yes, okay, of course. Uh, it's 2019 today and we are already, it's the seventh time that mm -hmm. we are organizing Europom. It's, that Belgium is organizing, yes, Belgium is but it's organizing. been held for it's like 30 year. years yeah, now? It, is, uh, it started in 1989 mm -hmm. and it was founded and MBS, our association, was one of the founders of uh, the Europom Association mm -hmm. and the founders together with France and the Swiss uh, group, they have the opportunity to be the host for Europom a little bit more than the other countries because at this moment Europom, Europom Association or the Europom Consortium as we, we name it, uh, it is a group of n nearly 20 of as associations, associations like ours and they're coming together each year, mm -hmm. each year in another country. How many countries are represented this year? And here this year we have 12 countries with 16 delegations. I'm asking uh, somebody from the delegation from each country to tell us something about a local variety. So can you please tell us something about this one, which is a yeah. Belgian variety? Which is a typical Belgian variety. It's called a snell apple in, in Flemish. Mm -hmm. And we have a local name, maybe it's a little bit a strange name, but they call it Oude Weven. Yeah? <laughs> old, <laughs> old women. women yeah. <laughs> but, it's, it's, it's a bit worse. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was a, a big woman, I think, because it's a very very, very big very large variety. apple. <laughs> yeah, and it is originated in the neighborhood of St. Truiden. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I read that it's a very good variety for cooking, especially. Yeah, it's a mass producer. Yeah? <laughs> it's heavy fruit, a lot of fruit, and it's producing nearly every year mm -hmm. quite a lot of kilos. No biennial bearing. Yeah. Less biennial bearing than other varieties. So it was produced in that area, especially for the juice production, but also for the syrup production. Mm -hmm. uh, like Truiden, Borgloon, Welle. That's the, the center of this country for the typical apple and pear syrups. Mm -hmm. the straw. Yeah, we have seen some you of them see there. The yeah. stem from the straw. And is and it also like a, a easy variety to grow? It's an easy variety to grow. It gives a mass of kilos and it is very easy to gather, uh, to pick or to, to uh, shake the trees and, and, and pick, pick up the, 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 the apples from the ground and bring them to the syroperies. The and it's, a, it's the variety of the year it now. It is the variety uh, every year as, a, as an association. We you choose a local. And we choose an apple or a pear as the variety of the year. Or a cherry a few years ago, it was the, the little black kerniels uh, zwart, a little black, black cherry from our region. So we are choosing a local variety mostly as the variety to of represent. the year. And now this year we are the host for Europom. We thought it can be a little bit bigger this year, so we, <laughs> we, we chose the biggest apple. The biggest apple. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Part of the exhibition is also showing how fruit can be preserved, and a very typical way of preserving fruit here in Belgium and the Netherlands is cooking it down to a very thick syrup. Uh, one of these pots, which is 600 grams, um, it takes six kilos of fruit to make this. So the fruit is first juiced and then cooked for many, many hours. This is what you get. Um, it's really good. There are some specific varieties that are very good for making this syrup, like the snell apple that we have seen uh, just now. And the great thing about this is that it keeps indefinitely, <laughs> more or less. 
We have now arrived at the stand of the Frisian Pomological Society Association. Friesland is a province, northern province of the Netherlands, and I'm here with Ninke Zelstra, Hello. who is a chairwoman of the association. Yeah. And I ask her also to present one of her favorite heirloom varieties. Yes, and that would be the, the Red Winter Calfil. It's a very old variety, it's a, it's a few centuries old. It's not certain uh, what is the uh, where, where it origin, comes from. Mm -hmm. but um, yeah, I don't, discovered it, it last year. I had it for several years and uh, I never um, ate it at the right uh, moment, mm -hmm. which is from January to until March or April. So it is a very good keeper. Yeah, it's a very good keeper. Mm -hmm. And then most of the apples uh, were gone or they become very sweet. And I, I like the apples a little bit with a acid with a good, in it. Yeah, with a good balance of sweet yeah, and acid. Yeah, and aroma. And um, I, I tasted some and then I um, discovered this, uh, this one. And it was um, it was uh, juicy, and the structure was very nice, and the aroma was very nice, and uh, yeah, it's, is, uh, is it also an easy apple to grow? Like, is it? Yeah, I have the tree on a, a, a small rootstock, a slow-growing rootstock, M26, and I have no problems with it on my mm -hmm. no disease plant. problems. No, and you garden organically, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. of course. Okay. And, um, yeah, it's uh, it's um, not very common anymore. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I heard it is in Sweden as well, but I, I never found it here in the Netherlands or in Belgium. And um, it it it, des it deserves to be more grown. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank yeah. you. Okay. We have now arrived at my favorite stand, which is the stand of the Czech Republic. Admittedly, I'm a little biased because Czech Republic is where I myself come from. But there's another reason I love this stand, and that's because in, unlike in most of the others, you can actually taste almost all of the varieties that are on display. The Czechs have not only brought heirloom varieties, which are on the other side, but also a lot of modern scab resistant varieties that have been bred in the recent years in the Czech Republic. And I have a new, I found a new favorite apple, which I want to show you. It's called Bennett, and it's a cross between Melrose and Rubin. A beautiful large apple, look at the color, but it's also really delicious, very aromatic. Uh, which I like in apples and it's a good keeper as far as I understand. But there are also old heirloom varieties on display and I, uh, I asked Katarina Strosova to introduce one of them to us. Mm -hmm. Hello, um, I am working for a Czech Union of Nature Conservation and I would like to present you one old Czech variety. Uh, the variety called Panenské České. Uh, Which is something like virgin Czech apple? Exactly. This is the nice uh, red apple and uh, this apple was uh, very common on the uh, Christmas table mm -hmm. and uh, this apple sometimes have only four seeds mm -hmm. inside. Usually apples have five seeds and uh, people were used to uh, find their destiny for the next year. Okay, the so, destiny, yeah. which one we can choose? <laughs> choose one. Okay, that's uh, nerve-wracking. This one is okay. a beautiful one. Okay, we will try. <laughs> yeah. it's so it's like good luck to find five seeds and bad, bad luck, luck to, to find, find four. four seeds. Okay. But it's not Christmas, so... <laughs> so it does not count. It's just a try. Oh, there are five, right? Oh, is it like, yes. It's but, a little star. But one is smaller. <laughs> No, I will take it. <laughs> Good luck for Good luck. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. And you can taste also if you want. Mm -hmm. It's a nice juicy apple. It's very good for transport. The apple is not... Um, uh, if it is harmed, uh, it can sustain the pressure. So you can transport it without uh, any damage. damage. Yeah, it tastes kind of familiar, like something from my childhood. Really nice apple.
one. My daughter prefers this one. Mm -hmm. This is the stand of the French delegation and they have brought varieties from one conservation orchard and they are mainly local heirloom varieties from the Alsace region and I have asked also here whether they would introduce one of the typical local varieties. So can you tell us something about uh, the apple? Das sind bei uns die Christkindler, die man putzen muss oder mm -hmm. reiben, nicht? um sie schön glänzen zu machen. Das ist ein, einer der richtig elsässischen Äpfel. Den hat man früher, meine Eltern noch und meine Großeltern hauptsächlich, an den Tannenbaum gemacht, um den Tannenbaum zu zieren. Am Platz von den Glocken, wo man mm -hmm. heute dran hängt. Und 1853 war ein Jahr der Da war die, äh, wie sagt man dann, äh, in Anne de Famine, wo es wenig zu essen gegeben mhm. hat, hat man keine Äpfel, um den Tannenbaum zu ziehen. Dann hat einer bei uns die äh, Glasglocken erfunden. Mhm. Ja, von seither ziert man den Tannenbaum mit Glaskugel. Aber heute kommen viele Schullehrer und wollen ihr Tannenbaum zieren mit Äpfel. Um den Kindern zu zeigen. Es ist ein äh, sehr schönes Apfel. Sehr schön, sehr, sehr schöne schön. Farbe, ja, und ja. sehr glänzend. Ja. Ja. Dankeschön. Ja, bitte. We're now at the Swedish stand and maybe you would not think so, but apples are a very resilient fruit uh, sort, sort of fruit and they can be grown not only far to the south but also far to the north. And also Sweden will be organizing the Europom next year, is we that will, right? Yes. So, so everybody come to Sweden next year? Yeah, yeah. to Helsingborg. Helsingborg. In the south of Sweden, mm -hmm. near Denmark. And you have brought some old Swedish varieties yes. and some new ones? New ones, yes. What are your favorites or favorite apple? A favorite apple, in it's very common in Sweden. It's an apple called Aroma. Mm -hmm. Is it an aromatic apple? Yes, it is, yes. And uh, it's aromatic until, well, January, February. So it keeps well? Keeps well, yes. You can save it. And is it uh, is it easy to grow? Is it a healthy tree? Uh, yeah, it's rather healthy. Hmm. The crop comes every every year. year. No yeah. biennial cropping. No. Good. No. And it's made in uh, in the south of Sweden. Mm -hmm. This is Sweden. Mm -hmm. You know, and Sweden is around 2,400, I think, kilometers. kilometers. Mm -hmm. But most apples are created of these modern varieties is created here in this part of Skåne. Southern, in yeah. Skåne. But you can, you said, you can grow apples as far as. Uh, Yes. yes, you have. You can grow apple up here too. In Lapland. Okay. Right now we uh, are exploring which varieties you can grow higher up. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, members in our organization working with apples, testing them how hardy they are, mm -hmm. how high up, and. In the south of Skåne, we, s we call it Zone 1. Mm -hmm. It's easy to grow things there. Mm -hmm. And then we have, I myself, I live in Narke here in the middle. We have Zone 3. Mm -hmm. And Lapland is what zone? It's Zone 7 and 8. Okay. And in Zone 7 you can, uh, this year, uh, they produced 
50 different varieties. And that's amazing. That's amazing, mm -hmm. yes. And they were all very healthy and uh, nice. You and said you don't, have, you don't have any uh, insect problems and disease problems no. up north? No, yeah. at least not yet. Okay. If people didn't have any apple trees mm -hmm. in so the So there north, were no problems. Perhaps yeah. there were no. And if everyone starts to grow apple trees, perhaps there will uh, problems be will arrive with fungi and uh, mm -hmm. insects in the future. We don't know, but now they are now. Okay, thank you. There is also a fun event. There was a apple cake, apple tart baking competition, which is now being judged by somebody. I'm told won the uh, bake the Belgian bake off or something. So we will take a peek. I managed to score a piece of the winning apple cake, so I think that's a nice way to wrap up our visit to Europe Bomb 2019. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and maybe I'll see you next year at Europe Bomb 2020 in Sweden. Happy gardening!